All right, we're back. Gonna try and do just a really quick overview on my system, uh, 12,000 XT. I know a lot of people, when they're first starting out in solar, they're just trying to understand how it works. Uh, they're trying to see how it all hooks up together. And they're just trying to understand, you know, the process, what's going on. So I'm just gonna go over my system the way I did it and <clears throat> kind of go over a couple things that I was doing when I was kind of doing the research and kind of developing um, in my mind what made the most sense to me. So, um, when I was first looking into doing solar, I looked at a couple of channels and a bunch of the YouTube channels, they're all really good. <clears throat> Some of them just depends on how you learn um, are gonna make the most sense for you. Um, but when I was doing this uh, Evan on Country View Acres, uh, his channel was very good. He, I think he has like an electrical background. And so he's able to um, kind of break down complex electrical topics and solar kind of topics and simplify them into terms that most people can understand. Um, and that helps a lot when you're first learning solar. So, solar is kind of like, like its own language. And if you don't know the terms, you can't really follow along what's going on in the video. But um, he's able to break it down and simplify it pretty well. Um, and then... Um, his camera, his camera angles and his lighting and his microphone, um, all of his videos are top-notch quality. Everything always looks really good. And because he has an electrical background, everything is kind of done like what a professional, that's like a true tradesman of how it's supposed to look like. And so my stuff definitely is not tradesman, but I mean, it gives you an idea. And if you take your time when you're doing your system, you can make it look pretty, pretty close to what his stuff looks like. Um, and then the other guy, um, that I kind of watched uh, was it's a smaller channel. It's called uh, Solar Shenanigans or Shenanigans Solar, but I still couldn't understand what a critical loads panel was, and so I'm sure Evan explained it, but uh, it just it still wasn't making sense. I was like, what is that? Everybody keeps talking about it. Like, how is that part of the system that's going to help power you know my house? Uh, but the other channel, uh, Solar Shenanigans, he uh, he was doing an older EG4 setup, but he showed the process of his critical loads panel. And then essentially the main point of that kind of um, his channel that I took away was the critical loads panel is just an extension of your, of your main electrical panel. It's a sub panel and that's all it is. Um, it's termed critical loads because people move critical circuits over into that, but it's just a sub panel. And if you've ever done any type of like a electrical work where you make a sub panel, whether it's for like a, an extra, you know, panel that's going to power like a jacuzzi or a hot tub in your backyard, that's all you're doing. It's just you're making a sub panel. Um, but those two channels kind of help me out the most, uh, kind of understand it and kind of piece it together in my head in a way that I can understand it. And when you're first starting out with solar, um, that's kind of what's going to help you the most. You got to find um, how it works. And once you can figure out how it all works together, then piecing everything together uh, should be a lot easier. You're not going to be stuck. You're not going to be confused. You're not going to get, you know, uh, worried about like if it's gonna work or not you know how it works because you understand and you've seen other people do it um, <clears throat> so uh, my system is an off-grid setup um, and that's kind of what I'll be going over the off-grid stuff um, I'm not super familiar with the hybrid I kind of have the idea of selling back to the grid but that's not the route I wanted to go the route I wanted to go was off-grid and just have batteries as the storage and um, if I needed more power than whatever the batteries and the storage could um, whatever the batteries in the solar couldn't then um, that's where the 100 amp bypass feature come, comes in from the from the off-grid uh, 12,000 XP. I'll talk about that a little bit later but um, we'll kind of go over briefly kind of the inside here of what's going on. Try and get a little bit of a better angle here. All right I'm getting as close as I can here. Um, so we'll just go over briefly um, what all these kind of like components are. So this section here is my solar arrays. Uh, the wires coming in from the solar panels. Uh, I think I got one going into PV1 and one going into PV2. Um, this portion here is, these wires here are connected to the utility grid, the electrical panel, the main electrical panel where the utilities, uh, the utility company is sending electricity. And then this, this breaker here is what's going to our critical loads panel. This is our communication cable, batteries, um, um, battery cables. Uh, for the battery storage but i'm trying to walk you through the flow of kind of what's going on and so in our pv arrays 
uh, the solar panels will make DC power. And so most houses are not going to be able to use any type of DC power. Um, again, <clears throat> uh, if you have micro inverters that convert DC to AC, that's a different story. But um, I'm sticking with uh, kind of this uh, DC setup and the inverter does the converting to the AC. So I have two arrays outside in my backyard, one on the porch and then another like pergola that I built um, with like a, it's like a shed pergola that has a bunch of solar panels on it. I'm gonna try and do a video later, kind of just walking through um, those arrays. But these two arrays um, are sending um, DC power. Um, I'll actually see, let's see what they're making right now. So I got 1,900 watts coming in from one array and 1,800 watts coming in from another array. So I got about three, 3,500 watts. No, I got almost 4,000 watts um, DC kind of power, or well, I don't know if that's the right term. So I got 300 volts and 350 volts. So I got 350 volts and 300 and I think 60 volts coming in DC power. I have DC power coming in from the solar panels. They come here into the inverter. The inverter converts that to AC power. AC power is what powers your house. That's what you're gonna be able to use uh, to power your washer, your dryer, um, pumps, lights, circuits. It's gonna convert that DC power to 240 volts AC. And it's gonna send that uh, 240 volts AC down these wires here. Um, this is two gauge aluminum and these two wires are going straight to your critical loads panel and we'll kind of go over there but just so we're getting the, the kind of concept here DC power coming in from the solar panels the EG4 uh, converts it to AC 240 volts and it'll send it right down these two wires and so let's go take a look at the critical loads panel real fast critical loads panel is about 40, 50 feet from my, uh, it's probably like 40 feet. So this is the main electrical panel here. Uh, those two wires, they don't land here. Uh, they land here into the critical loads panel. So those two wires that were coming out of that breaker that said load, they go right here. Let me zoom out here. They're coming in right here. These are the two hots, 240 volts coming down, 120 on each leg. And then these are our uh, critical loads, our circuits. These are all lighting circuits. So the way I have mine set up, I have another video showing uh, kind of moving how you move, uh, you know, critical load circuits from your main electrical panel to your critical loads panel. So this this critical loads panel um, is powered by the 12,000 XP. And it's from those two wires that are coming out of the load. And we'll talk a little bit about here in the main electrical panel. And the sun's kind of getting us a bad angle, but there is a 100 amp breaker here, 125 amp, but um, XP has 100 amp, the EG4 12,000 XP has 100 amp bypass. So this 100 amp breaker here is the same two gauge aluminum. It's going up into the attic and then it's dropping down to where the inverter is. And in the event that there's not enough solar, not enough batteries, what's gonna happen is the 12,000 XP is going to recognize that the, the consumption that your sub panel, your critical loads panel is using is more than um, your battery. It's more than your, what your battery has at the time, and it's more than what your solar is producing. So if it's cloudy, it's rainy, it's dark outside, whatever the case is, if your battery is low enough, you're not making any solar, but you're still using a lot of uh, consumption of, of electricity. Uh, the inverter has this 100 amp bypass feature. And so what will happen is, depending on the settings that you have on your um, 12,000 XP, so mine, I think if the batteries get below 20% and there's not enough solar to cover the, the consumption from the critical loads panel, um, it'll just bypass itself. And that's where these two wires come in. These two wires are hooked up to that 100 amp breaker in the main electrical panel. So the EG4, the 12,000 XP will just pull power directly from that 100 amp breaker and push it down this breaker. It bypasses the whole inversion because this is already AC. All it does is just send it here, bring it back down, and it goes straight to the critical loads panel. And so uh, your lights won't turn off. Um, you know, there's no transfer switch, nothing. This has like an automatic transfer switch and it does it seamlessly. Um, that's the kind of the biggest selling point for me was like, no matter what, you're always going to have electricity uh, from the grid in the event that you don't have batteries or enough solar um, coming in. 
and it does it automatically. There's no like lights turning off, flickering, nothing like that. It's just, it works perfect all the time. And so that's kind of um, the flow of how it all works. And then as you're pulling um, power from the grid, um, because it's dark outside, you don't have enough solar batteries, um, once the sun comes out, you start generating enough solar, um, depending on the settings you set, um, the batteries will charge up, um, and it'll automatically switch back. It'll stop pulling power from the grid, and it'll just go back to its normal cycle of using uh, solar uh, DC converter to AC, and then it'll just kind of go that way and use the batteries um, when there's not enough solar. But there's that 100 amp bypass feature, and 100 amps is a lot. Uh, for most people, that's going to be more than enough um, as a backup. And so I think that's kind of uh, the big uh, kind of, I don't know, things that I was trying to learn uh, when I was kind of setting it up is how it all worked. How is it supposed to, uh, you know, power my house? Um, I touched on the critical loads panel, kind of gave you guys a little bit of a shot, but I have another video if you guys want to check it out, kind of detailing exactly how you move those circuits over from your main panel to your critical loads panel. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, I'm just showing you a way, the way I did it, um, to kind of just give you one idea of an option, but there's plenty of different ways to do it. Uh, let's see, a couple of the things I wanted to mention. Yeah, I think that's for the most part gonna be it. Um, I'll say that if you're thinking about doing uh, solar, I would recommend before you do any of this, uh, get an energy monitoring system. The one I use is Emporia, but there's a bunch of different ones out there. And that'll give you a pretty good gauge of uh, what um, your energy consumption needs are. What circuits in your house are using the most electricity, what appliances in your house are using the most electricity. And then from there, you can kind of go and kind of price out what the equipment is gonna cost based on your kind of needs. Um, there's a couple of different ways you'd go about that, but I think I'll make a video uh, later on kind of describing two different pathways you could take when you're getting ready to buy stuff. You can either change your energy, you can change your, your appliances that are like high energy users. Typically that's your hot water heater, your dryer, um, kind of HVAC air conditioners. You can kind of switch those to the more energy efficient appliances and get a smaller, less capable inverter um, because they don't use that much energy and it's gonna be less expensive buying the inverter, but you spent more money on the appliances. Or you could leave those high energy, high consumption appliances in place, but you would need a stronger, more powerful, more capable inverter, and so you're gonna pay a premium um, in order for uh, that high, high, kind of high output inverter. Um, so it just kind of depends on the, the route you wanna go. There's kind of pros and cons to both, but I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a deeper dive video on like that, that kind of um, crossroad that you would run into when you're getting ready to purchase uh, equipment. But that's just kind of my breakdown of how I did it. I'm curious, you know, who you guys are watching on YouTube. Um, I watch all the YouTube guys. Uh, Will Prowse has got a bunch of good stuff that helped me. But sometimes, I'm not just like picking on him or anything, but a lot of these guys that have been doing YouTube or solar for a long time, um, they kind of already have a basic fundamental uh, knowledge. And so, in order for you to follow along, you need to know the fundamentals and the basics. And if you don't know that, it's hard to follow along and comprehend. And sometimes, like Will does a lot of whiteboard videos, and for some people that works really well, but um, for some people like it's hard to visualize and conceptualize what's going on on a whiteboard. You need to actually see the equipment. You need to actually see uh, the breakers and the wiring and the, the sub-panel in order for your, you to make connections of what's going on. And that's where I think uh, I'm that type of learner where I, you know, I can figure it out on a whiteboard, but I prefer seeing it hands-on. Uh, Evan on Country View Acres does a really good job of that. Uh, there's a couple other guys who, you know, they, they break it down um, hands-on, and they show you, you know, the actual equipment, the, the wiring, you know, they get into details. Um, and for some people, you know, that's what, it, you're gonna look for that type of content that's gonna help you. Um, so I'm curious to see, you know, or hear, like who are you guys are watching that, you know, you found helpful, um, because that's, the main reason why I'm doing this is so, um, you know, it's another kind of resource that you can use to kind of help you, uh, you know, piece everything together so you understand and how you can make, um, you know, whatever I said kind of, if it applies to your setting, if you can use certain aspects and it, you know, make it applicable to whatever you're doing. Um, it's not always going to be, you know, you're not going to always be able to copy somebody 100% because the applications are going to be different, but 
um, the core kind of ideas and the concepts and the flow of what's going on, that stuff, you can carry that over to you know, any, anything you're doing. Um, so I'll kind of wrap this one up and then uh, I'll try to make some other videos kind of showing the arrays and uh, going over kind of the energy monitoring system because I think that's a big piece that a lot of people miss out on. But I'll catch you guys on the next one.